Hello everyone, we're over 6,000 subscribers on this channel. Everybody has a fascination with animatronics and we're going to build one. Well, here I'm uh, making a, a platform to pretty much hold everything in place. Mainly for it to be flat, not any angles. Because eventually I'm going to be uh, designing the skull for this or a cover for the whole mechanism. But I just kind of make an oval shape and, you know, uh, stretch it out and just place it here. But I just need to make sure that I have it, you know, long enough. But I can't go too long because I'm still trying to realize that, that this needs to go into, when it has skin on it, it needs to go onto a, a printer. And when I say it has skin on it, that's the sculpture part of it. I'm going to physically make the skin by making molds of the print of the sculpture. And then that sculpture will have a mold. And then I will insert a core inside of that mold that would produce a layer of skin. And the skin will be a silicone. You'll see later that I, I'm using multiple programs to make this thing. And I, I do that because some things I can do easier on another software than I can on this one. Because, you know, I couldn't put a, like, once again, I can't put a sculpture in this because it can't handle that kind of a, you know, large file format. I got to make sure that I have room in the back. Uh, on the bottom there, you see the two servos on the in the back that's where the gimbal is going to go but i was sitting here making all these ribs and and just trying to get some kind of uh support for the for the brow table and that way you know just to have some kind of legs to hold up everything sometimes you'll you'll see on these videos and, and I do edit because, you know, to sit there and watch me spin this thing around is because I'm studying and trying to figure things out and taking measurements and things. But it's just that, uh, you know, some of them things might just seem kind of boring. It's boring to me because I'm the one that's doing it. And when I record, you know, 15 minutes of me just spinning this thing around, you know, <laughs> that's just part of it. And I try to avoid having that on the on YouTube so it don't bore y'all to death. And this is just all part of designing. You know, you don't want to print something that's going to fail or, you know, design a jaw and the jaw don't open and things like that. And, but here I'm just making a like a, an arch here and trying to get some kind of a look that I need to how the skull is and like eventually I'm going to have like a flat it's going to be all flat and not necessarily round it's round for me to get a basic structure of the like a skull but most of these might be more square like later because there's going to be a cover covering these these ribs these supports and those will have a magnet and it will attach, the skull will attach to, the, to those magnets. You know, the servo cost is also determined on the movements. Now I could add more servos, ears or whatever, or cheekbones. I'm just trying to get it at a, at a point, a cost, you know, uh, you know, if you have eight servos, something costs ten dollars each you know that's 80 bucks but then if some of these servos can get on up there you know 15 20 dollars and it's getting kind of costly now here i realize that i need to do a sculpting test that way i can determine if the brows are too low and that's what i did to determine and i did raise the brows up 
I made one big STL file, just copied the whole thing out of SketchUp and put it into ZBrush. And you, if you see here, I start sculpting. And it was mainly because of the eyelids, and underneath the eyelids where the, where the brow is. And I wanted to make sure that I had clearance to where the eyelid will curl into itself. <clears throat> where, you know, that way it won't be messing around interfering with the brow. Yeah, I just doodling around playing with this, trying to get a basic structure of the alien. Just, you know, making sure I keep the, you know, the right thickness. But yet, you know, I, it's just a concept doodle right now. And I can use this later to when I have the skull completely done. And then that way I can put this in and, but actually I'm going to be sculpting on the core for the final process. That way everything can be, I mean, 100% the thickness that I need to achieve this. And I'm still learning ZBrush and I've had it for a couple of years and, but you know, I used Sculptress for five, six years and just dedicated to it because, and you get Sculptress and ZBrushes, I mean, they're, they are different, but it's just a learning curve. But this is what I got as far as a design and you'll see, and I'll post these pictures on the comment section. So y'all could see them a little clearer than the video. Now I moved my, uh, you know, I use a software called OSB, I believe it is, that records my, you know, my screen capture. And it got shifted and it's not, you know, centered right, but I'll work on that. But what I did was here in Blender, I started designing a skull shape. And once again, I'm using multiple softwares because I can manipulate certain things in one. Like I can't manipulate the vertices in SketchUp like I can in Blender. And this helps me with the roundness shape. And then some people say, well, why don't you put it in Fusion 360? See, this part doesn't need to be all smooth because it's going to be underneath the skin. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can make it smooth. But it's easier to edit in low poly than it is in high poly. But, like, I'll take this whole mech, and like I said earlier, that I will make it into an SDL file, and I'm able to put, you know, export this into other softwares. And what that does, though, it gives me a proper measurement. And... That's what I like about, well, SDL files. Now, I couldn't put a, an OBJ because it's going to be tiny and I would just be guessing. I mean, I could still use an OBJ, but I'd have to reduce the sizes and things like that when I bring it back into SketchUp. But here I'm this, you know, I'm, I have it in the sculpting uh, a Blender. And I'm just sculpting it and matching up to where I made that little uh, platform. And, even, and it is low poly. And you'll see me here add loop cuts or just loops. And it adds more vertices to it so I can manipulate it. And then I can bring this in uh, back into the sculpting and any points I was not satisfied with I can just manipulate and smooth out but then I can take this later you'll see me where I put it back into uh, SketchUp and I'll save just this piece as an STL file yeah I just trying to get this thing kind of a basic shape of a skull you know nothing to you know too elaborate right now because it's later and I still need to finish the main you know mechanics of this animatronic but you'll see here uh, I'll pull it back into uh, SketchUp 
and then you can kind of see the, the skull shape that I'm going for. But I can uh, manipulate this to where I need to have a skull, and, but I need to just finish the entire thing before. The skull is going to be one of the last parts, but I needed to, uh, to make this. It's like one of those foreseeing what I'm going to have to have and getting measurements and how high this structure needs to be and don't want it to interfere with the eyelids but so in SketchUp I took the creature and opened the jaw up opened the lips and uh, adjusted the eyelids and then I made another STL file so the creature's mouth would be open and then uh, exported it to ZBrush and then I started sculpting the skull and or sculpting the creature with its mouth open to get that visual look and there's some things when you sculpt on uh, and and in printing sculpting sometimes you have to exaggerate for it to print right and plus on top of that you need to make certain folds like eyelids for those eyelids to bend into itself and like cre creases and things like that to give a more lifelike kind of a character but it's just a little concept doodle but as you see here how it looks with the in and out there but like here it is with the mouth open and how I'm saving it as SDL file, but I'm closing. Now I'm going undoing everything to get it back in its right position. But you'll see all these other ribs I've added just to have a look in this shape and size. But but here's the uh, here's what I got so far, and I'm still working on it to get that table for the to the eyebrows stationary, and it's coming along. But here's the full video of, of the sculpt I did, and I'll post some pictures also in comments in YouTube. Hey, I appreciate all the nice comments. Thank, thank you for all the thumbs up and sharing, especially sharing. <laughs> it's getting out there, and I appreciate that, y'all. So, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm glad we all have an interest in the same thing. So... Y'all have a great day. Later.